For Unit 6, Part 3, we're going to talk about six main types of energy, as well as the law of conservation of energy. So what are six main types of energy? Well, I kind of mentioned in the previous video that there's kinetic and potential energy. But if you put kinetic and potential energy together, it makes a certain kind of energy, which we call, I might have to move this, there we go, mechanical energy. So mechanical energy is the total amount of kinetic and potential energy of an object. Again, <clears throat> mechanical energy is the sum of your potential and kinetic, uh, yeah, potential and kinetic energy at the same time. So it's not looking at just kinetic. It's not looking at just potential. It's looking at a particular time. What are those two energies put together equal to? So that's your mechanical energy. Another main type of energy is thermal energy, and we will really explore this very soon. Thermal energy is another word for heat energy. It's just heat. Now, I'd be, I'd be careful with the word heat because heat has a very special meaning, which we'll get to very soon. But just for now, no thermal energy is the energy from heat. A third kind is electrical energy. We use this pretty much every day of our lives. Our modern society is dependent on electrical energy. Electrical energy comes energy comes from energy comes from the comes from the move of electricity. Three more include chemical energy, which is the energy found in chemical bonds. We talked in the previous video about chemical potential chemical energy. Again, it's just the energy found in chemical bonds. A fourth kind, no, sorry, a fifth kind would be electromagnetic energy. These are all the energies from the electromagnetic spectrum, which technically does include thermal energy because that's infrared. But more specifically, this is looking at like visible light. So light would be electromagnetic energy. The last kind and another kind of energy we will go in depth with is nuclear energy. Nuclear energy is energy found from the nucleus of an atom. Whether you split the nucleus of an atom or you combine the nuclei of atoms. <clears throat> All six of these main types, and there's more types of energy, by the way. Another, just a very, very common one, if I want to do a seventh type of energy, would be sound. Sound is energy. Your voice is pure energy. Any sound you hear is pure energy. Uh, anyways, going back to what I was about to say, all six of these can go interrelated. And that's where this law of conservation of energy comes into play. I'm going to see if I can find a good spot to put this. Uh, or how about right down here? There we go. So the law of conservation of energy says the following. You've probably heard this from years of science in elementary school. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only transfer from one form to another. In the previous video, we looked at how potential energy converted to kinetic energy and how kinetic energy converted back into potential energy from an object that was swinging back and forth, like that mass on a string that Angel let go. However, this is also very important, by the way. Technically, energy can be created. You can actually create energy. You can create energy by destroying mass. That's where the famous equation from Einstein, E equals mc squared, comes from. Energy is equal to mass times the speed of light squared. That's what the C stands for. C is the speed of light. Um, but <clears throat> so technically speaking, the sum of all the mass and energy in the universe is conserved. So you can, I don't know if it's possible to create mass from energy. I want to say yes. That's how, that's how I think gravitational waves work. Not gravitational works, uh, waves. Um, Higgs boson. It's called the God particle. It was discovered about a couple, two or three years ago. They finally discovered, found evidence of the Higgs boson. Supposedly, it gives energy mass. So, um, in a way, it is possible to make energy have mass, and it's possible to make mass into energy. But the total sum, the sum of all the energy and all the mass in the universe put together, that's conserved. That will never, ever change. There's only so much of that. It is very important to know that you cannot lose energy. What happens is it just changes from one type to another type. And then also very important, 
whenever you go from one type of energy to another type of energy, you always make some thermal energy. Always, 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 always. Now, we'll look at situations that ideally do not, such as we'll look at um, converting 100% of potential energy to 100% kinetic energy, but in real life, that does not happen. For the exact same reason in the last video, when Angel let go of that mass, it didn't hit him back in the face, even though if it did, it would just barely touch him because he can't go any higher than what it released from. Uh, the reason why he didn't go all the way back to his face was because some of that potential energy converted to thermal energy because of friction. So again, in real life, anytime you go from one type of energy to another, you do release thermal energy. So nothing. It is impossible to be 100% efficient in real life. We try to get as close as possible, but, it's but it is impossible to be 100% efficient. Uh, this is a very, very, very important question. I almost guarantee you this will be on the test. I've had it on every physical science test I've ever given. I've taught physical science for roughly eight, seven, eight or seven years. This is my 12th year of teaching. Uh, I've always had this question for physical science. How does nuclear energy create electrical energy? <clears throat> we get our energy from either nuclear power plant or a coal power plant. The only difference between the two is the very first step. So let's pretend we're using nuclear energy. I'm going to raise my picture up so it's not in the way. So how does this work? Well, first, we start with nuclear rods. There's radioactive nuclear rods that are in water. So nuclear rods, which is which type of energy? Clearly, it's nuclear energy. These nuclear rods, which give off nuclear energy, are in water. And it heats up the water. So if you heat up water, heating, that's thermal energy. So nuclear rods heat water. Nuclear energy turned into thermal energy. This heated water changes into steam, and this steam moves a big giant turbine. So moving a turbine, if you make something move, it's moving, therefore it has kinetic energy. And if you have kinetic energy, that's technically mechanical energy. So nuclear rods heat up water to move a turbine, which is nuclear energy changing to thermal energy, changing to mechanical energy. And that moving turbine runs what's called a generator. A generator is a machine that takes mechanical energy and creates electrical energy. So a moving turbine runs a generator, which creates the electrical energy. Now again, technically, when you go from the mechanical energy to electrical energy, some of that is turned into, because there's friction, into thermal energy, but again, not super important. And when electrical energy goes like into your house, runs along these wires, some of that's lost to, again, thermal energy. Um, but these are the four main ways. Now, if it was, for example, a coal power plant, instead of using nuclear rods, they'd say they burn coal. Well, what's burning coal? Someone would say, oh, that's thermal energy. Well, okay, yes, the thermal energy you're burning, that's thermal, that's heating up the water. But how is that heat originally created? How, what's the coal? The coal would be chemical energy. So you're breaking the chemical bonds, which releases energy, specifically thermal energy. That, that then heats up the water, moves a turbine, and runs a generator. So coal power plants and nuclear power plants basically do the exact same thing. It's just the very first step that's different, and then the waste they produce that's different. But this is not a discussion on the biohazards of coal power plants versus nuclear power plants. We're just talking about showing how energy does not simply disappear. Energy is simply not created. What happens is energy transfers from one form to another. So this is conceptual. Another example of this is think of your toaster oven. Uh, not, not toaster oven, but just a toaster. So when you turn on the toaster, what happens? Electrical energy, because you have to plug it in, turns into thermal energy, because that's what heats up the bread. And if you look inside, you can see those little, they look like little red wires. And so it gives off light, which is electromagnetic energy. So electrical energy created, not created, but transformed into thermal energy and 
electromagnetic energy, light. So that's just another example of conservation of energy. Mathematically, we can look at this through the following. I'm not going to show you an example now. We will do this in class. But conservation of energy says that the sum of all your initial energy has to be equal to the sum of all your final energy. So your initial kinetic energy plus your initial poten gravitational potential energy is equal to your final kinetic energy plus your final gravitational potential energy. So we're actually going to do situations where we have to solve for these variables here. It seems very, very, very complicated, but it's actually pretty easy once you get the hang of it. It does require good algebra skills. So if you're not good at algebra, you're probably going to have a bad time with this. But if you keep at it and you really work, you should get the hang of this. Now, again, notice there's no thermal energy here. This is an ideal situation where 100% of some of the energy changes 100% into the other type of energy. Realistically, there should be thermal energy over here on the final side, and I can do situations with that. I mean, all I got to really do is put in the word plus, you know, plus thermal energy. And again, we can actually calculate how much thermal energy is generated from, like, let's say the common example is a roller coaster. So let's say you're at the top of a hill, and I want to know how fast I'll go at the bottom of the hill. I can also calculate how much thermal energy is created because of friction as well. So we will look at this equation in depth in class. But the key thing I wanted to talk about today are what are six main types of energy. Again, mechanical, electrical, thermal. Uh, there was, I think I already said chemical. So I'm going to start from top. Mechanical, thermal, <clears throat> electrical, chemical. Oh, what was the fifth, fourth, fifth one? Electromagnetic and nuclear, and how they all are interrelated because of the law of conservation of energy, which states energy cannot be created or destroyed. It simply tr changes form, which, again, technically is not true. You can create energy. You can create mass. But the total mass and energy of the universe is conserved. So, again, we'll look at this equation more in depth in class.